on the JP website and also the English or Global website, they announced that the game is being canceled and shut down. So for JP on January 18th, it is being shut down uh, next year. They're still going to put out like some updates here and there, add a little bit more story. Like there's a whole schedule and stuff. But yeah, once it hits the 18th, it is uh, done. And because the JP is shutting down the servers in January 2025, they've ended plans to release it in the West uh, with the collaboration of Amazon Games. So it's it's over. It's over. But no more Blue Protocol. I mean, I'm happy I got a chance to play it, but unfortunately for a lot of people, they didn't have that same opportunity. Because uh, I know a lot of people, like when they tried to get onto the JP server, they got like banned because like they're really against people uh, outside of Japan playing the game. I guess I was just fortunate enough to where I didn't get like tagged, <laughs> just smacked out of there. But I had a fun time with it. Uh, and honestly, it reminded me a lot of New Genesis, where a lot of people were interested, but then a lot of people ran away because the game was bad or didn't have like a lot of content to do. You know, there's like several places that thought like Blue Portal was going to be the big anime MMO. Like apparently, um, they have like some numbers here from Games Radar that, uh, like Blue Protocol, the JP Twitter posted like at launch in the first seven days, the MMO got 600,000 people and a concurrent player count of more than 200,000 during that first week. So there was like a ton of people interested. And this was just the JP server, by the way. I'm sure that like this includes like some foreign people that snuck in, including myself, that uh, got to play. But uh, like this was just like a small fraction of like the interest going into this game. But I think like, the main thing is like that interest just wasn't held. Uh, there's a lot of people that were willing to try it out, but once they did, it, it just like fell off like pretty quick. And they couldn't hold that interest because either like a lack of content or just like the way the game was set up. Because like I mentioned before, I have played this game. I played it on stream when it launched uh, for JP. And like, I thought it was fine, but I didn't play all the way to the end game. Uh, uh, like, apparently, like, the end game was where the lack of content was, like, the biggest thing. And I think that just goes for, like, a lot of games, right? Because, like, going through the game myself, the, there was, like, the open world, there was dungeons, and, like, there was, like, the crafting uh, for your, like, your own weapons and whatnot, so there's the grind for that. And there was, like, world bosses, uh, there was raids they're more like urgent quests from like pso2 here where it's like quests that show up every few hours or so and you just go in kill a boss something like that yeah that's like the main content like just going through the game yeah besides that like there was like an arena mode where it's just like a like a hordes thing where you're just killing a whole bunch of enemies uh there was like a tower where it's like different floors that had like set bonuses and uh like objectives that you had to do uh, there was time attacks and whatnot, but I guess like even with those things, it wasn't varied enough for the people that continued to play the game, or it it wasn't like interesting enough. Cause I uh did play like a couple of those modes, but I didn't get to like the time attack stuff or anything like that. Cause I think that was like the high level thing. And with the dungeons, there was a lot of dungeons, but unfortunately, there was like basically no reason to go back and uh do the other dungeons. So, like, in Final Fantasy XIV, for instance, I've been playing a lot of that lately, they have, like, the duty roulette. So, you, you help new players go through the earlier dungeons, and you get rewarded for it, like, on a daily basis. But Blue Protocol didn't have anything like that, at least when I played. So, it's like, you do the dungeons, grind, grind it out for, like, a weapon, because, like, a lot of the weapons came from, uh, like, the dungeons. So, you grind out the materials to make it, but then you just move on to the next dungeon and repeat the process. Like, that was, like, the cycle. You do the open world, you do the story that is usually involving the open world. But, you know, with a story, you can only experience, like, it once. You can only fully enjoy it once. Might be able to, like, reminisce about it or whatever, but once you do the story, it's like it's done, right? Yeah, the cycle is just making weapons, just doing the dungeon, then the next dungeon, then the next dungeon. So it's like once you got to the end game, there was only, like, I believe, like, two dungeons at the time. So then there was only, like, two weapons to make at the end. And then, like, the only other things that you were doing were, uh, like, maybe one of those raid urgent quest-like things and, like, time attacks. 
Because like a lot of the content was just you do it at the time you get to it, and then you don't do it ever again. I think that was like a huge issue with Blue Protocol. It's very similar to how NGS is. It's like they put out content, but then as the game moves forward or as you move forward in the game, you never do it again. Just never do it again. Um, I, I think like at best, there might have been like cosmetics that you could earn in the previous things. But I think even the majority of the quest didn't even have that. But there's like only a select few. Uh, because I recall there was like first time reward clears that gave you cosmetics, but I don't know if there was many like where you'd farm out a quest to get a cosmetic or something. Uh, but yeah, there was just like very little once you got past everything. And on top of that, I, I think like a big downside to the game is uh, I got the cosmetics normally because um, there was very little that you could earn, at least any meaningful <laughs> ones. And uh, a lot of it was tied to a gotcha system where you have to basically just like, once again, NGS, or a lot of it was tied to a scratch of some kind or like a loot box of some kind, the gotcha mechanic. And then you have to go try to gamba for the cosmetics that you actually want. But the biggest difference, which I think ruined Blue Protocol, is that there was no marketplace. Because like as a free-to-play player or just as like a player normally, you can go to the market in this game and buy cosmetics from somebody else with like the in-game currency, like just the gold or Masetta. But Blue Protocol didn't have a marketplace, so you had to spend real money to be able to get these cosmetics. Like there was no alternative. Uh, I think like slowly over time, you could get some of the premium currency, but it was so incredibly slow that you basically weren't going to get anything. Like maybe once, like a month, you could do a, a single pull or something like that. But it was like ridiculous. So I think that was like a huge deal breaker for people. Yeah, exactly. Where uh, they couldn't get like any of the cosmetics. There wasn't like a whole lot to do at the end because like because everything was built to where you're earning it yourself. There had to be things to earn. And the only things to earn was like making a weapon. It's like once you made the weapon, then what? It's like you're not you're not doing anything. So it's just like just playing the game just to play it. You know, there wasn't like a goal. So that was, I think, the biggest thing about that game. Besides just, like, uh, the gameplay itself. Uh, the gameplay, I felt, was, like, fine for the most part. But it was, like, on the slower side of things. It, it, I feel like I didn't know what it wanted to be. It was, like, a mix of, like, Final Fantasy XIV and this game. Where it was, like, an active combat system. Where you're, like, smacking whatnot. So you had, like, combos and stuff. But then a lot of the abilities were on cooldowns. Like, a ton of abilities were on, like, 20, 30 second, 60 second cooldowns. So you're just spamming your normals, waiting for the bigger abilities to come up. So it wasn't super interesting at the time. I think they eventually changed that, but I don't know if it was enough. I mean, clearly not enough because, you know, the game's getting canceled. I'm trying to think. Like, there was not really any zone hazards from what I remember. I guess, like, the boss mechanics were, like, avoid a circle. And I think that's all it really was avoid an AoE attack, and then it never got any more interesting than that. Like, for Final Fantasy XIV, for instance, there also is that at the beginning, but then it turns into, oh, there's, like, this mechanic where everybody has to stand in the same spot. Or, oh, you gotta get away from that player, otherwise you're gonna get smacked, like, get away from the tank. Or, oh, you have to stand over here so you don't get pushed into the, the hazards. So, like, it keeps building and building and building to add additional mechanics that you learn throughout the game and keep using over and over. So it feels like you're smart when you actually continuously do those mechanics and when new, new ones are introduced, it keeps it interesting. <laughs> it also makes you feel smart when you figure those out. But with Blue Protocol, there wasn't anything that was, like, built upon. The AoE attack might have been shaped, like, slightly differently, but it, for the most part, it was like a circle around the boss. Yeah, there's a lot more with Final Fantasy. I mean, I'm only, like, in Stormblood. I'm just talking about my personal experience in, like, the first parts of the game. I think, like, all the issues they could have fixed if they really tried, but I think with Bandai Namco, they just didn't want to take the risk, I, I guess. Like, they were, they were already so down in the hole, because, uh, like, a few months back in, like, June, they stated that they're in insolvency, or basically, they're making not enough money to pay off their debts. Like, they're losing money faster than they could make it. 
So they had a negative net income, and it was a lot. 8.2 billion yen. So this was like the online uh, portion of Bandai Namco. And they just kind of had like failure after failure, I guess. Like So with Blue Protocol, that wasn't doing so hot after launch. And then, uh, some of you remember Gundam Evolution, that also got cancelled. This is also under the same umbrella. So they just went, like, huge in the negative, because they spent a lot in development and trying to host these games, and they just weren't doing well enough. So, because of the financials, just how it was with the game itself, it would, ha it would have to take a long time to build that back to where they could maybe make money. Maybe make money. Uh, Square Enix is an example of, like, they took the gamble. They're an example of trying to make the game good. So they needed a do-over. Which I think Blue Protocol probably would be in the same boat. But I don't think Bandai Namco wants to take that same risk. Because, once again, Blue Protocol is a new IP. While Final Fantasy has the whole franchise from years and years backed by it. Exactly. It's part of this huge IP that's already been established. So it's a bit more safe of a gamble, I think. So I think people would, would be willing to try out a relaunch. And also those that are just dedicated to Final Fantasy in general. There, there would be the diehard fans that are there. It's not like there's diehard fans of Blue Protocol, right? At least not in the same scale. <laughs> I'm built up over years and years. Blue Protocol just didn't really have a chance. And like with other games in the market, like Final Fantasy XIV, with this expansion that just came out with Dawn Trail, and just like, you know, being a dominant force before then, and World of Warcraft as well, with uh, its expansion that just came out, I believe, The War Within. And just like the other multitude of games that you could play, right? It, it just didn't have a chance. It's always just sad to see a, a game get canceled or like shut down that you were kind of looking forward to to play, and they said that you could eventually play it, you know, we just had to release it. It's, it's like the weird mentality of like trying to do an MMO, but like putting in gotcha mechanics. So like in other gotcha anime games, you know, you spend money to get the characters, right? I mean, this game, it wasn't like about characters or weapons. It was just cosmetics, as far as I remember. The thing is, you could still earn the characters or still earn the weapons just by playing the game. Like you actually get a decent amount of currency by playing. But I don't think that was the case in Blue Protocol. Like, you didn't even have much of a shot of getting a lot of the cosmetics. It, it was very small. And in addition to that, there was, like, pay-to-win mechanics. Like, I don't think there was anything that was, like, an exclusive advantage where, like, you had to get it with real money. But there was, like, these upgrade things where you could get more slots in your weapon that you could get lucky with when crafting. But you could more guarantee if you had like a certain item that you got from like the gotcha system. Or you could get like better chips. And it was hard to get those chips like free to play wise. So you could accelerate your progress immensely by just spending real money. So it's like so many factors coming in at this game. That was just like, oh, that's a negative, that's a negative. Even if it was like minor or more major thing. Just all of that piled together, I think, uh, hurt the game. Like, I just killed the game. I don't know. It's like, when you look at either of the games, like, BDO, Final Fantasy, NGS, it has, like, one thing over Blue Protocol. There's, like, one thing that, like, sets it apart at least. There could be multiple, of course. But there's one big key difference that Blue Protocol lacks. When it comes to the successful games versus Blue Protocol, the, you know, dead game. I'm just curious when a company's going to try to do something similar again. Because a lot of people are looking forward to it. Like, the audience is clearly there. As we saw with the numbers, 600,000 people tried Food Protocol at launch for the JP server. Just JP. And there was 200,000 concurrent players throughout the week. I mean, sure, that's just the launch period. But, like, that just shows how many people are willing to give a game like that a chance. So there, there's an actual good game that has like the content, has a good cycle, has the you know the marketplace, the player interactability, things to do, then uh, people will play it. People will play it.